Hey everyone, Matt here. So I recently got a comment uh, from Howie from New Zealand and he wants to take a closer look at how I build my deep frames. And I really think first I should uh, mention how I got the ideas for this deep frame and how it's came to be designed like this. Because um, I got a lot of the ideas from other people on the internet. Uh, so originally I used to run all medium length straws. So I was looking into converting to a deep frame hive and I came across the Lands hives and frames and there was a, a really good website which I've mentioned before horizontalhives.com where he's got PDFs of uh, schematics on how to build frames and build uh, hive bodies. Really good resource. He also has the conversion shims and the conversion frames, which you've seen in my other videos, which I still use, uh, to convert from the lands to the, or to convert from the Langstroth to the lands. Um, so when I started building that, uh, the lands and the land conversions, I came across uh, a posting on Bezource, and it was done by Greg B, and he was saying that, you know, if you're going to go to the the trouble of converting from the Langstroth to the lands and then downsizing that hive to only fit the lands, you should just build a hive that's big enough to accept your Langstroth frames all the time. So you can still use those frames, which you've seen in my other videos, I still do. Um, so that's basically where the, the width of the frame, which is the lands, and the depth of the frame is the uh, Langstroth with the idea from Greg B. Uh, I've also got another couple of good ideas from Greg B and his posts on uh, bsource.com and his comments. I was having some issues with cross combing, so he told me to revert back to, uh, well, to revert to inch and a quarter size. Uh, with the frames compared to the lands inch and a half and that should cut back on the double combing and cross combing uh, Which I used to run my mediums all at was the inch and a quarter and then also he mentioned about these little shelves Which helps with reattaching comb and it helps them to uh, Draw comb good too, which I've seen because there is Originally I was doing just one dowel across here, which you can see the little hole there and they didn't seem to draw that out really well, uh, but this seems to work really good. So let's just go over the components now. So you'll need to make seven different pieces in order to assemble this. So let's go for the top bar right now, which as I said is the same length as a Layens top bar, which is 14 inches and 5 sixteenths long. And then I make mine an inch and a quarter wide. And then you notice in the section here in the middle, um, I router down to have it so that it's three quarters of an inch wide here. And this total section is eight inches long on center here, so eight inches. And then what that does is um, there's a type of hive called a Lanz Colmena, and it's popular in Spain. And basically what they do is they use a Lanz frame as the brood chamber and then they cut these grooves in the top and then that lets the bees come up into honey supers uh, where they connect their nectar flow. But with that dimensions, like I said, there's these as three quarters, then what that does is it makes a three eighths inch groove there between the two. And these hives here, which uh, I just finished painting yesterday, these are 14 frame um, hives, my double insulated hives. Um, and then what they're going to do is with the, the 14 inch or the 14 frames wide, they will then fit, let's then fit, oops, a medium honey super on top, which the bees can then put the nectar up in the top there, kind of like a, a lands colmena. Um, so that's what those grooves are. So now if we go to the, the frame rests, which is the exact same as a, a Layens frame rest, which is uh, this long section here is an inch and sixteenth. 
by three eighths of an inch deep. And I just use a, a dado blade to cut that with my table saw. Now this uh, top bar is actually three quarters of an inch wide. So that makes this bottom tab here three eighths and the, the groove we cut in there three eighths. I also cut a groove with my table saw blade right down the center of it for this comb guide. Now the, the width of the comb guide is dependent on the width of your table saw blade, which with fiddling around, you can get it so that it, it press fits in there. Uh, with some glue, it stays in there pretty good. I have had some, when they're in the hive, that the wood will start to warp out and sometimes it pulls out if it's not tight enough in there, um, which I just kind of pushed it back down and shot a staple there and that seemed to fix that. But this section from this end bar to this end bar is 12 and a quarter inches long. So this is 12 and a quarter inches long um, by, I just use three quarter inch uh, deep. So it sits in that groove, um, I don't know, maybe a, a quarter inch deep into that the top bar here. So that's that. So now the, the end bar here is 17 and three quarter inches long. 17 and three quarter inches and four inches of that is this section here which kind of um, helps it uh, line up straight and keep your frame kind of spaced and level in the hive um, this section here is four inches before uh, with a router i cut these two grooves in there and the width of this is three quarters of an inch so i go from inch and a quarter down to three quarters of an inch and then this other dimension here is three eighths of an inch wide for that. So then now is the bottom bar here. And this bottom bar is exactly the same as a Layens bottom bar, which on this width here is three quarters of an inch. And then this dimension is five eighths of an inch by the 12 and a quarter inches long. And then the shelves, the two shelves are 12 and a quarter inches long by three quarters of an inch wide by a quarter of an inch. And I think the quarter of an inch, I could probably go a little bit thinner, but I think the quarter of an inch gives it enough rigidity that it's not going to warp and flop around. So they've been working out well. And then for where we locate these, what I do is I measure from the inside of the bottom bar here, measure up five and a half inches, and that ends up being the center of this shelf. And then another five and a half inches is the center of that shelf, which leaves about five and a half inches to the comb guide. Now I'm not really sold on the comb guide. I'm not too certain if that actually helps out. Um, just cause I've, I've seen on some of my videos where the, They'll draw a comb from here and they'll draw a comb from here and a comb from here and it ends up always being centered on there. So maybe maybe because these are so thin that they can only festoon from them whereas if they were festooning from something wider they might not pick the exact center of it. I don't, I don't know if I'm if that's necessary there but maybe it is. We'll see in the future here. Maybe I'll try one without it in there. But uh, I think that's all the components. So I hope that's what you're looking for and that'll help you out give you a closer look at that frame but uh thanks for watching and uh we'll see you on the next one